today's video I'm going to be talking about the ether and how we detect it and to me it's kind of hard to uh, to deny but in debates they would say that it's the way flat earthers describe all all the phenomena it's like the magic substance but to me they use gravity as a, as a magic fix-all but uh, they say that the Michelson Morley experiment proved the non-existence of the ether the way they did that was using short story using an interferometer which uh, splits two light beams and rejoins them and detects the interference pattern and they say that in the experiment they say that they detected no interference and so since we know that the earth is moving approximately 30 miles a second then there must be no ether that to me you call that science since we know the earth's motion and we know the speed the earth is moving through whatever you want to call it we know that it's nothing at all but that same interferometer can detect our rotation so they they try and use that as proof that we are uh we're rotating but it can't detect the orbital rotation i mean are you kidding me that's just that's borderline retarded even thinking like that but you know people have some strong opinions when their paradigm is on trial but look like this magnet you don't see a field i could go in between it and everything to me that's uh one clue but i'm going to show more clues the way you know that our senses detect it like when it breaks the sound barrier it like makes ripples to me it's making ripples in the ether i mean it, it's not plasma or liquid or solid to me uh our sense of smell basically etheric uh, I don't think that there's literal particles uh, floating up from something making a fragrance. Or, uh, I think we can see it with like the SpaceX launches when they hit a certain layer. It makes like ripples. I think the lunar wave and uh, superfluidity. I think all these things are tied together and uh, I'm going to show that and try and demonstrate it and i'm going to give a little rant too so stick around the liquid helium had turned into a superfluid which displays some really odd properties here i have a beaker with an unglazed ceramic bottom of ultra fine porosity ordinarily this container with tiny pores can hold liquid helium but the moment the helium turns superfluid, it leaks through. We call this kind of flow a superflow. Superfluid helium can do things we might have believed impossible. It appears to defy gravity. A thin film can climb walls and escape its container. This is because a superfluid has zero viscosity. It can even produce a frictionless fountain, one that never stops flowing. Superfluidity and superconductivity were baffling concepts for scientists. New radical theories were needed to explain them. Here that guy said we need some, some radical new theories, and I think I have some. Just so happens. But I wanted to start by saying... Like sharing ideas is it's uh it's healthy like it's like exercising the brain and and like demonic exercise like exercising toxins stagnation of secrets and shit so so I, I come up with a saying sharing knowledge and ideas is like exercising the brain and exercise and exercising the tox the toxins of secrets and flushes out the stagnation of hiding knowledge. Hiding knowledge can only be achieved by isolation or perpetual lies, easily identified by anyone open to advancement of humanity. Yeah, 
But um, I wanted to uh, I put together a clip of. Pardon me. I put together a clip of videos that to me demonstrates the ether. And uh, like I was talking about the that wave that follows a plane, you know. Also, uh, the lunar wave. I mean, how in the world would you describe that? It's ether. I mean, it's not a solid liquid or a gas. And, I mean, the closest thing would be plasma, but it's not that either. So, um, you know, it's, uh, and also like the rockets, when they hit that layer up there, some, they've been recorded a few times. They hit a layer and make ripples and shit. And uh, uh, later on in this video, I have a, a guy caught a wave on a, on a Jupiter. I think it's been on other planets too, man. These things are being recorded. And and there's no real way of describing this stuff, man. So it's not talked about. But to me, it's fascinating. But, um, so I've been, you know, going on in, for some time about how Coulomb's Law is identical to gravity. It's just, uh, you know, different constant. And... And uh, gravity pretty much done away with repulsion. So the Coulomb constant is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th. And that, that's the amount of, of electrons moved in like like per second by one amp. One amp. And just it's just a number that, that fit everything to me. And the gravitational constant is way, way smaller. It's... it's uh, thinking newtons it's 6.674 blah 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 times 10 to the negative 11th and like i said it did away with repulsion because coulomb's law has uh you know it's electrostatic charge positive and negative repulsive and attractive where gravity d just has attractive and uh which raises questions so if you want to do repulsive uh, equations you have to add in buoyancy you need a you, you got to add shit so that raised questions where people trying to come up with with new explanations detecting bullshit like like um the relative density disequilibrium with the density buoyancy which i mean if if i'm being honest everything has to follow uh relative density disequilibrium whether there's something causing down up and down you know it's it's still it's got to follow that law it's um there's no getting around it but you know maybe there is a uh a force or like a constant pull down but to me they had to eliminate the force because it doesn't add up um as gravity being a force it doesn't add up um so they had to they had to call it a force but but not count it as a force you see what i'm saying it's bullshit so to me, the answer is like electrostatic equilibrium. Like, like uh, you take a thousand magnets and you put them together, but you don't line them up north, south, north, south, the way they stick together. You just bunch them together and they get, that's what they mean by incoherent magnetism. They get weaker and um, it'd be, I guess, the same way if you lined up a bunch of um, electrostatic charges mm -hmm. bunch of me, and just randomly bunch them together. It'd probably lose a ton of its force. The more magnets you put together, the weaker the force gets. It already ain't even as strong as just the one magnet. And it only attracts. So that would be described by gravity. It's attractive only. So that's the thing. But uh, for, for this paradigm... To work you know it would be kind of wholly dependent on it you know two main things one that that the moon shit they show us or we didn't go to the moon and uh i i have a i like to keep an open mind so if if they did say maybe just maybe they did go but what they're showing us ain't it that's not it for sure and uh to me the moon would be smaller they'd have to rewrite the equations man for uh you know, I'm sure it would be small. It'd probably be a similar constant to gravity, but uh, but it, it would leave room for 
for smaller bodies up there. You know, because I'm looking at the moon and that shit's a sphere. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. It sure looks like a sphere. <laughs> if it looks like a duck, you know, you know what they say. But uh, but to me, but you can't focus in that sharp on something 240,000 miles away. I, I ain't buying it. I don't care how big it is. To me, it's closer. And the, uh, the electrostatic explanation, and I think the math could explain it. And they'd say, no, oh, man, the planets, it doesn't work, the moon and... No, bullshit. That's the way that they came up with the freaking sizes and densities of these planets. That's, I mean, with the with the gravitational constant. That's how they got it. So they're just using their own formula to prove their own formula. The same thing they do with with maps and and try and say GPS, GPS, and 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 the, the distances match up perfect. Yeah, that's because you're using latitude and longitude to compare the distances to of course if you like you map it out on a ball you map it out as as a ball then the measurements are going to match that it's same thing you could do that you could map out a neighborhood with latitude and longitude turn it into a ball and then you could argue that them distances line up perfect doesn't prove nothing but it's now i wanted to talk about the, uh, the ISS, like, something's up there, you know, I don't like denying things I see, and I, whether men are on it, no, I don't think men are on it, they, they throw it in our face that men ain't on it, like the latest video, with the, the water pouch, guy brushing his teeth on the ISS, and, uh, he brushes his teeth, and he drops the pouch, and he, they speed up the video, but then the pouch creeps in at the bottom corner, and they didn't speed up that layer, so it's obvious green screen layering. They throw it in our face. I mean, you'd have to be a fool to uh, to ignore it, you know. But something's up there, you know. And uh, so if they did land on the moon, it's a lot smaller. But now, even if it's uh, the size that planar trig dictates, that's still like 30, 40 miles. You know, that's wider than almost any city, if not every city. That's huge. So they could land shit on it and walk on it if... Uh, I guess. I mean, I still, I'm highly skeptic about that, to be perfectly honest. But um, I don't know. I like uh, just sharing ideas, man. And um, I like, like they. Why do they? I mean, the lunar wave should have been. It should have been on the news. It should have been the top story until they could explain it. You know, they just claim it's bullshit. But there's so many people who have. Who have caught lunar waves that you know the only people that see it and still deny it are people vested in gravitational paradigm i mean it's it's people are popping up but i think i have a little one i got to go back through my footage but um i don't know my uh so yeah we have satellites you know i'd say most of them are probably up on on balloons they've showed us that and when they and they hide it when they hide something there's bullshit when when there's secrets or or hidden shit then you know there's bullshit behind it and the people who prod and poke and to ask the questions get the lies and the lies compound and they get sillier and sillier and uh i can't stick my fingers in my ears either way i i know there's satellites up there you know and I know there's something up there that I says whether there's men on it or not. No, I don't, I don't buy that. But, you know, I, I reserve a small piece of my thoughts that just maybe. But they're hiding something. They wouldn't show us all the bullshit. But I'm going to do a video on how, the, how this ties in, how the superfluid ties into the ether coming up. And, uh, that's, that's just about it, man. I wanted to share some ideas I had. And uh, see what people think, man. See what we come up with. Put our heads together. And just keep questioning everything the way science is supposed to do.